The digital world is forever changing and evolving. With the advent of Netflix and other streaming services, stories are more popular than ever, whether told via TV, in the printed word, or pictures. But it's the last two that have been the most ill-served by the changeover to digital publishing. Newspapers are reporting perhaps their worst figures of all time, and many local editions have stopped their presses, which has had a detrimental effect on small community newsagents. The move to online consumerism has also affected people in less obvious jobs, such as Russell Hagen. When I worked in Blackburn, it was a big printer's which focused on printing CD covers, um, the booklets you get in your CDs, and the, the back inlay, which tells you what tracks are on. We printed other things, but that was the main, uh, the main items. I mean, a lot of printers were suffering with the advent of digital, um, you know, digital um, sources of information. You know, like I say, uh, obviously people get books and magazines online. Um, however, I think what we printed with the CDs uh, booklets suffered more so because whereas people still like to buy a book or a magazine, um, yes, people do read them on tablets, but there's still that reluctance. I think because of the music, you listen to music, whether you buy it digitally or um, on a CD, the end result is still the same. Um, I think that's that, you know, suffered more. Um, we all could see that the factory was going to close at some point. Um, and I decided instead of just trying to find another job with other printers, which would pretty, which would carry on because, y you know, it's an uncertain industry. Um, personally, though, I feel that some items are better physically, like a book or a magazine. Um, there's a difference. Digital books have even made their way into schools. Bridget Hemingway teaches maths in Manchester and has used e-textbooks for the last two years. <clears throat> so there has been some resistance from some pupils and their parents about the move to digital textbooks. Um, this is, I think, because we are all caught up in this digital revolution. Um, it's all happening now for us, so there will be inevitably some resistance. But I don't think we have any choice. This is the way the world is going. Recently, physical book sales have overtaken digital for the first time since the Kindle became prominent. But online reading media is still having a terrible effect on community libraries with 343 closing in the last six years, costing nearly 8,000 jobs. It is also possible for print and digital media to coexist, a fact that comic book publishers have latched onto, with Marvel and DC now offering a free digital comic with the purchase of a physical copy. This does not seem to have affected the relatively niche market of comic shops, including that comic shop in Preston, owned by Noel Corliss. Well, I've owned this store for about 11 years now, um, and I wanted to... Um, it's a bit interesting question. I didn't actually want to open a comic store. Uh, I worked here for many, many years, um, and at the time, the, my boss worked in Blackpool, and I barely saw him. So I was almost running it myself anyway, but when he decided to semi-retire and close the shop down, I uh, made him an offer he couldn't refuse. I don't think um, online sales, sales have affected my business uh, for digital comics uh, as much as I thought they would when I first heard they were happening. Um, so, no, I don't think so. Uh, I have actually bought one digital comic uh, and I read it and it just felt a bit odd. Obviously, I, I read it on a tablet, um, which was a, about the same size as a comic, but it wasn't It wasn't the same. I didn't, no, it wasn't. Um, I think that people... Uh, the collect comics want them physically in their hands. They want to be able to hold them. They want to be able to resell them. Um, I don't think digital comics will be the end of physical comics. Because uh, why would you want a digital copy if you've got a physical one? Elsewhere in the publishing world, bookstores are actually performing better than in recent years, with Waterstones and W.H. Smith 
earning very strong profits. There is also renewed interest in second-hand books such as charity shop bargains and also antiquarian items like those found in Parkinson's books. I think the second-hand nature of the books has benefited us in that the standard second-hand books are obviously much cheaper than the um, full-price retail books elsewhere but more importantly the the books that we sell are usually rather unusual and you couldn't go next door and buy them in Waterstones. So um, they're books that um, are desirable because they're not easily obtainable. The non-book items in the shop um, did help us to um, fight through the mortgage when we first bought the building and they're certainly a great help to the overall business but I think they're not essential. If we had to stop selling these other things, I think we'd compensate by filling the same space with uh, a, a lot more expensive books in the central part of the shop. Certainly digital um, and online publishing and physical books can exist well alongside each other. I think there's a symbiotic relationship. I think each one prompts the sale of the other. And certainly we've had experiences of people coming into the shop who've seen something on TV or heard something in recorded music and they want to buy that item and own it. And I think in, in the other direction, I think what we do, it also stimulate, stimulates um, online publishing too. If you ask the public, many would say that the printed word has had its day. But after hearing from those involved in the industry, it seems there's life in letters yet.